Welcome to Cities on the Move. I'm your host, Stephanie Passingham. Eulayla Adwell has led such an interesting life, and today we'll learn more about her teaching career, collections, and musical talents. Walt Alms and his guests join us from the construction and electrician programs at Riverland Community College to tell us about the new house the program students have constructed in Austin. This beautiful home is not only a great future home for some family, but a great learning experience as well. And finally, we actually take a closer look at all that Riverland Community College has to offer for the region. We have all this and more coming up on Cities on the Move. Layla Adwell began her teaching career in the 1930s. She is also an enthusiastic collector and musician. Let's learn more about her interesting life. My name is Eulayla Adwell and I live in Austin, Minnesota. I've been a resident of Minnesota since 1996. I was born in 1920 on a farm in Gentry County and uh, I went to a rural school. I had to walk to school until I was in third grade. And then one morning, my dad said, come with me and go to the barn. And we went to the barn and there stood my pony. She had a spirit. She was so, and she'd throw me off. How many times have I been thrown off? And she'd stop and wait for me to get back on. And then we'd go again. In 1938, I began college in Maryville, Missouri. It was called Northwest uh, College, now it's Northwest Missouri State University. Well, I began teaching at Wilson School in 1940, and this is the bell I purchased, the school bell. It, uh, it was an honor to be able to ring the bell for the teacher. <laughs> in 1940, there were 100 rural schools with one teacher and eight grades. It was just a frame, white frame building, and uh, you had to do everything. You were the teacher, uh, the janitor, the repairman, the nurse, uh, any emergency that came up. And the first year I taught school, that was uh, in 1940, and I was hired for a first class job $75 a month. In 1990, I knew they were having a contest uh, for uh, a favorite teacher in uh, Northwest Missouri and Kansas and so on over uh, KFEQ. The school where I worked, everyone, parents, students, had written to the broadcasting company and submitted my name. So then they told me that I had won the uh, award for favorite teacher of the Midland Empire. It was, it was a shock to me. I had a long, long career, 54 years, and I never got tired. It was so exciting every day to have, to work toward making things better and to having hands-on for the children, and I was always searching for something to make it better. I just love to help the children, and it's so much fun, and I never get tired. I have the energy, I have the will, I have the time, and I want to share all the good things that I can. I think there's one word that says a lot, and I think if you remain curious about your life, your surroundings, your earth, and how things work, remain curious. Get a computer and look up something. <laughs> Can you name one of the three PGA players born in Austin? Find the answer on our website, ksmq.org. 
Well, today we're talking about a couple of programs that Riverland Community College offers and the house that they build. And our special guests today are Walt Alms, Andrew Getchell, and Dan Raymond. Thank you guys for being here today. Happy to be here. Yep. All right. Well, let's get a little description about the programs first. Walt, why don't you start with the construction program? Tell us what it is, what the kids learn, just in general, and then we'll go into the details of, of the house project. Well, they, they start out, it's a two-year program, and we start out with some basic hand skills, um, showing them how to frame walls, shingle roofs, and basically anything that the concrete and cabinetry, anything that would pertain to the house. Um, after we've done some basic uh, introduction stuff, then we get a chance to work on a house project in first year, so the students actually um, spend a little time doing a house project right, in, right away in first year. And we also do a second year project as well. So okay. the and when the kids graduate from your program, they have a Di they have a diploma in carpentry. Okay. Um, so they have a two year diploma in carpentry after completing it um, for for um, the two years of the construction program. Okay. And Dan, you run the electrician program. Right, right? construction okay. electrician program in Albert Lee, um, and our students come over and and wire both the homes that the carpentry uh, uh, students build and it's uh, kind of the highlight of their year. They actually do it in the second year okay. um, of the program. Our program is a two-year program. Um, we teach, start out the very basic uh, theory, uh, doorbell wiring, and get more advanced uh, uh, residential wiring, commercial wiring, industrial wiring, motor control, um, low voltage wiring. So we, we kind of do cover it all. Um, our students graduate, uh, when they graduate, they all have a diploma. And they, uh, uh, the Minnesota Department of Labor and Industry, there used to be a State Board of Electricity. Um, they give our students one year credit toward their journeyman's license uh, okay. when they graduate successfully. So. All right, sounds good. And Andrew, you came along. You are the student. Yo. Yep. <laughs> and what program are you enrolled in? I'm in carpentry, and I just got done with first year. Okay. And yeah. what'd you think? Why did you choose the program at Riverland, and, and what's your interest in carpentry? Well, I started off in high school with woods and stuff, and then I finally got working with it, and I figured out I like it, so I thought I'd go to school for it. Okay, sounds good. And guys, what should someone like Andrew expect to do once he's got his two-year diploma or, or certification? What, what comes next? What kind of occupation can he get into right away? Or in your case, there's some journeyman work that needs to be done. Well, in either case, electrical or carpentry, they can uh, become members of the union and uh, be journeymen or, you know, work towards a journeyman. They come out as an apprentice carpenter. Um, in the carpentry area, the, we teach a cross-section of, of a number of things. So somebody like Andrew could come out and do concrete work, um, the remodeling or building uh, construction. Uh, could be involved in cabinet making as well. So, I mean, we do quite a number of uh, sub-trades, yeah, sub-trades okay. as well. And how many students are enrolled between the two programs that you gentlemen run? Well, we, we normally start, um, the maximum that we take into the carpentry program is 28. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's um, been fairly steady. Um, you know, last year we had a uh, decline in enrollment with the economy, but uh, we're already seeing a little increase in, in uh, student uh, registration for next fall. So, okay. Um, right now we're taking 27 students in. Um, right. Our program also, because of the way the economy has been, is kind of uh, declining numbers, but we're hoping that starts coming back up again. Mm -hmm. um, because there is, they're saying. Uh, when I say they, they're, they're talking about the Department of Labor and Industry that uh, five years there could be a, a huge shortage of skilled labor mm -hmm. because all the baby boomers uh, will be retiring. Sure. And, and then there'll be a big demand for skilled labor such as carpenters, electricians, mm -hmm. plumbers, so forth. And do you guys get involved in the program with placing your students once they've completed your programs? We work with the students and, you know, we've got contacts obviously from previous years of, of people that have, have hired our students um, so we can give them names. Uh, we don't necessarily put them to work, you know, in jobs, but we can give them contacts to, to lead them into the right direction. Okay. Um, and we've gotten calls. Uh, I got a call, I think it was yesterday, uh, for um, 
he was looking for two people. So I sent a, actually I sent a text message out via my cell phone to four students and told them to make contact with him and see, see if they could uh, pick up a job there. We're also starting a new program in Albert Lee, it'll be a wind uh, turbine technician. Okay. that they'll need some electrical and then they'll need some maintenance and mm -hmm. that will be starting this fall okay. uh, for working on all these wind towers. Sure, sure. Um, very not good. actually constructing them but maintaining them mm -hmm. and they're all over the country and, and uh, we've seen a, a lot of interest in, in that too. Sure, so. yeah, we have had quite a few yeah. go up in this area. I'm sure it's the same in others. Uh, talk a little bit about how the industry has changed. I mean, we've been building houses for a long time, but I'm sure you guys who have been instructors for a while have noticed some changes in trends, changes in um, approaches in how you put together whatever type of construction it is that the projects are working on. Talk about what's different today that may be from when you first started. Well, Dan and I have been working on the electrical and uh, house building projects combined together for about 22 years now. We've been doing them together. Um, and so over that 22 years, yeah, we've seen a, a number of changes in, in features. People uh, come to expect so much um, uh, in, in, the, in the house um, today. And so, you know, like with him, we're putting in more electrical stuff than, than we did 20 years ago, 10 years ago. Um, the carpentry, the, the products, the products have changed dramatically uh, from composite deck materials to uh, um, now big, the big boom is uh, green build and so that's going to change um, how we market and sell the house as well but green green is going to be something to to be working and sure, looking towards. Sure, we hear that a lot. Uh, electrical codes have changed uh, every three years they change and, and to make the home uh, safer for the uh, consumer you know just uh, smoke detectors having to be uh, powered by two, two sources and, mm -hmm. and uh, CO2 detectors and more circuits and arc fault protection and ground fault protection and I mean all of that has progressed and newer products uh, um, just the way that you, the stuff you use it's easier to put up than it used to be mm -hmm. and, and, uh, okay. and, and the trends in different lights your style. <laughs> style, styles, styles, and, and maintenance. Maintenance is a big thing. Maintenance free, maintenance, you know, low maintenance um, has become a huge thing. I mean, energy energy efficiency. Yep, yeah, energy efficiency. Know. Now, Andrew, these guys have kind of laid out some of the things that you could be doing when you're finished with your program, and I know you have another year to go. And yeah. look into your crystal ball. What do, you, what do you want to be doing when you finish this program? Well, I kind of just want to go off and probably work for somebody first for a little bit, and then. See if I can make it on my own after that. See if I can start something up. Okay. Are you from this area, Andrew? Yes. Okay. Interested in staying or uh, branching out? Or? Yeah, kind of. Let's see how it is here. All right. So you have this project, which is just fascinating to me. I had a chance to go out and take a look at the house. Mm -hmm. You build a house with these kids. Tell us a little bit about how that idea got started and and why that's a good thing for your programs. Well, we actually build the two, one here right on campus, a uh, small one that the first year students build, and, and Andrew just completed that, um, and the electrical helped on it. And it, it gives them a, a real feel for what they're, what they're supposed to be doing. And the first year house is a smaller one, a little, little um, more basic, and it gives them a, a good chance to really be successful in uh, and see the finished product, something from start to finish that that, that is a home. Uh, and so then when they come back for a second year, they come out to my project, uh, I teach the second year, and we build a little larger home from start to finish, from ground mm -hmm. up, and that's where Dan comes in at that one as well, and, and they do the electrical out there. Um, and it, too, gives them a real sense of accomplishment when they're done. Um, they can see, you know, new innovative ideas. We put in a uh, considerable amount of time in putting in the newest and, and most innovative things, uh, trying new products, you know, experiencing that. And, and when they leave here, they know a little bit more about some of the newer things that are on the market today mm -hmm. than if we were just to teach them out of a textbook. Okay. And as, as far as electrical, um, we're not there the whole year like the carpenter yard. Mm -hmm guys are. Um, we just go over in the fall, do the rough end, 
um, and then we come back in the spring and do the finish. Yep. And a fair it, amount of coordination between your programs, yes, certainly. Yes, very, very much so. Um, but, you know, we do a lot of our shop projects in, the, in our shop. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just so hard to duplicate something of a whole house mm -hmm. like that, especially the second year house. It's what we get into there with, you know, speaker systems, alarm systems. It's a beautiful uh, house. This is, you know, not just a little box. This no, is, no, I mean, it, where, it's, where do the architectural plans come from? Who draws those up and, and what kind of responsibility do you give the students? I mean, Andrew, when you uh, worked on your first year house, I mean, did they pretty much say, go figure it out? Or, <laughs> I mean, give us a sense of how much is self-determined by the students and how much is really a, a learning experience? Well, we, we have a predetermined plan before the students start the project. Okay. So we pick out a plan um, and so the plan is already in place. Uh, once we have the plan, whether it's the first or second year house, uh, you know, the students can input it, have input into the style of the cabinets or the uh, types of finishes that we want to put on the, on the woodwork or how we want to finish the ceilings and the sheetrocking in the bedrooms and things like that. Um, the siding, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, in the second year, um, there's a little bit more freedom in creative design, I should say, in that we'll look at uh, the room and say, you know, if we were to move this wall or move this or put this here, um, would that make more sense? And and the students get involved in that a little bit by saying, you know, geez, this would look really neat here. Or, um, and so they do get to, to do a little bit of that. Um, but again, the plan is already predetermined. So okay. most of it's done. Mm -hmm. um, the deck design, you know, like when this uh, spring when we did the deck, um, students had a couple ideas, and so we changed our mind on the deck. Uh, it wasn't quite what we had started out to do. Mm -hmm. so. And the house ends up being for sale, right? Mm -hmm. The house is currently for sale. Um, it's uh, located out on 29th um, Street Southwest in Austin. Uh, I think it's 1305. 13 yeah. 1305. 1304 or 1305, <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> We should but know we're there area every day. Yep, yep. All the local realtors okay. are, have been notified and, and have access to showing it, and uh, we're just waiting, uh, you know, to, to sell that. And uh, then next fall we'll start another one. With okay. The, with and does the second. college front? I mean, do they have to purchase the lot and front all the product? Do you have community sponsors that help with the program? We we do purchase all of the products. Um, you know, locally, uh, some of the companies will you know work with us on on products or um, the installation of th certain things. Um, for example, Dan, he can talk about the security part of it um, and, yeah, and the group that helped we, him. We go through a local contractor. We've been uh, working closely with Fox Electric here in Austin okay. um, to get our material. Uh, there have been a couple little houses. We, we've done some other thing and, and so forth. And then we had a, another company this year, Heartland Security uh, Services. Um, they got involved a little bit. and. Uh, then bright ideas lighting in uh, uh, they used to be uh, design lighting in Mason City and they moved to Rochester they uh, we kind of we Walt and I and, and the owner get together and go through uh, the house and okay. figure out what we're going to do do kind of for lighting okay. um, along with Walt too we uh, we get together with my students uh, oh, a day or two at least and go through all the, the blueprints or the plans mm -hmm and look at ideas of where we want to put lights and how, you know, do we want wall sconce lights here, mm -hmm. recessed lights, and, and so they get some input there. Um, although we're governed by uh, the codes, the code, sure. obviously, what we have to put in, uh -huh. you know, um, but when we wire these houses, it's, it's uh, far beyond the minimum requirements. I mean, you, normally you could probably get by in an average bedroom with four outlets and we receptacles and we probably got six or seven. I was going to say, nobody would put up with that. No, these days I mean, uh, there should be no reason you need an extension cord in this house. Yeah. And a number of circuits, you know, you're required to have a certain number of uh, small appliance circuits in the kitchen, countertop plug-ins mm -hmm. or receptacles. And we we have tons of circuits in these rooms. It exceeds uh, that. Yeah. Andrew, tell us a little bit about the value that you see in actually working hands-on with the project as opposed to sitting in the classroom. Oh, well, I mean, we start from anything. Like, we start with, uh, like, little projects, hand tools right away, and then we build some little sheds, and then we get rid of them. We usually build them for customers, get rid of them, do everything on that, 
We'll start with the first year house. He'll just give us the blueprints and he'll basically tell us to take them home, go over them, figure out stuff, make sure we understand them all, and then we kind of just start building off of them and we always look off of those, you know, so. Sounds good. Well, what a great opportunity for students to get their hands right in the mix of it. I mean, that is the trade that you're teaching them mm -hmm. after all. So if you are interested in taking a look at this beautiful home located in southwestern Austin, you can check in with any realtor in the area, and they will give you a tour of the home, which is for sale. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand you've already had an offer, so yeah, if you're interested. And the spot in the first year house is for sale, <laughs> yeah. too. That's yeah. on campus. Okay. So be sure to take a look, and thank you guys for coming in and telling yeah. us all about the program. Thank Appreciate you. It. Yep. All right, Glad stay tuned for more Cities on the Move. John Edward Mower was a member of the Minnesota Territorial Legislature in the 1850s. On March 1st of 1856, the second territorial Governor Willis, A. Gorman, honored him by giving him the newly created Mower County his name. John was born in New Vineyard, Maine in 1815 and made the move west and settled in St. Louis, Missouri. He died on June 11, 1879 and is buried in Fairview Cemetery in Stillwater, Minnesota. Sometimes our greatest treasures are located right in our own backyard. Riverland Community College quietly goes about its business of educating our region. Let's take a look. Riverland Community College serves more than 4,000 students in southern Minnesota through a variety of programming options. Accredited by the Higher Learning Commission of the North Central Association of Colleges and Schools, Riverland's mission is inspiring learning for living through a personalized educational environment. The college takes a number of approaches when providing this personalized education, which is one of the reasons Riverland President Dr. Terrence Lease was drawn to the college. What attracted me to Riverland was the um, opportunity to work with a comprehensive community college. It combines what used to be the old junior college and just the two, first two years of a four-year degree. It also um, has the career and technical education programming that the vocational institutes used to offer. Uh, beyond that, it has uh, developmental education for students who are preparing to enter college and be successful at that level. Um, have a large customized training program and that uh, works with employers and their workers. So it's, it's, it's just the comprehensive nature of the college that really impressed me. The lifelong learning perspective is apparent in course offerings. High school students can gain college credits while completing their high school diploma. Riverland offers the traditional two-year degree options, and they also work closely with area businesses to develop customized training programs to meet needs that become apparent in the community. One of their new programs addresses a growing demand in the wind energy field. This coming fall we'll be starting a uh, program in wind turbine technology which will prepare technicians to install, maintain, operate, repair uh, wind turbines and that's a growing part of the alternate energy field, uh, very big in southern Minnesota and northern Iowa. Another area of expertise and advanced technology involves training allied health professionals utilizing state-of-the-art simulation equipment. The lab features computer-driven mannequins complete with lifelike chest movements, heart and lung sounds, and vocalizations. Students in the Riverland nursing and radiography programs use the simulation mannequins to practice skills in situations they might not necessarily encounter in their real-world clinical rounds. We've had some wonderful partnerships recently with um, other colleges, Workforce Investment Boards, uh, Workforce Development Incorporated, uh, Southern Minnesota Initiative Foundation. One involves a Department of Labor grant for over a million dollars and we'll be training um, allied health care workers in long-term care centers in 39 counties in Minnesota. An important part of lifelong learning includes student life, all the extras that come along with an academic program of study. For some students, that includes student housing, sports, and extracurricular activities. Riverland has a wide range of offerings and the size of campus that fits many students. Andy Benke has made the most of his time at Riverland. I think between wanting to play sports after high school and uh, my family kind of being in the area, Riverland was a really good fit. I, I really was a, it was appealing for me to want to come to another school where it has a very intimate 
uh, student teacher environment, uh, that's a nice transition from high school. There's so many things that you can get involved with. What I've enjoyed most here at Riverland is uh, I was able to grow my roots really deep, really fast. And um, it's, it's been really easy for me to leave home, be on my own, and uh, really gain my independence by being here at Riverland with student housing here and with all the activities that I've been able to join, uh, as well as being part of a team again, uh, being on the baseball team. And, and the work-study programs and things like that have been great. While many students choose Riverland because of its proximity to home and family, the student body is from all around the world. The people that I've met here are a wide variety of people. Um, the first five guys that I moved into student housing with uh, were from everywhere. There was one from Canada, one was from the city. Uh, one was from South Dakota. It's, it's been a large variety of people and it's been great. I've made a lot of lifelong friends here. And people, whether fellow students, faculty, or community members, are what make Riverland special. Well, I think our greatest strength is our people. Their commitment to excellence in teaching and learning and service to others. That's probably the greatest strength our college has. Riverland Community College, with campuses in Austin, Albert Lee, and Owatonna offers lifelong learners in the region a chance to learn, grow, and make connections for life, keeping the KSMQ region on the move. Cities on the Move is on the web. Make a comment, ask a question, or share your good idea by visiting our website at ksmq.org. Next week, we'll visit Leroy, Minnesota for a look at one of the wind farms operating in the region. We will meet Josh Karras, who gives us tips on how to sell on eBay. And we'll talk to Bill McNeil and Terry Goldman about the Great Dakota Gathering and Homecoming. Please join us Tuesday, June 9th at 6.30 p.m. for another edition of Cities on the Move. I'm your host, Stephanie Passingham. Good night. Thank you.